Hey developers, so how do you take your Vite site and make it pre-rendered or statically site generated? That's what we'll be looking at today. We'll look at SSG or static site generation. We'll take a look at how we can do it with a Vite SSG plugin and how we can create really fast sites using it. And then we'll look at a real world scenario of how we can use it with a content management system, in this case, using our Amplify content, and then how we can use it to dynamically generate all our routes and have everything rendered during build time. And what's really neat is that our bundle size will be super duper small because everything will be loaded at build time and we won't have to include any of those packages inside our application. So if you're at all curious on how this works, make sure you stay all the way to the end and you can learn all about it. I'll leave some timestamps in the description below so you can jump around if you need to. And as always, if you can leave me a comment on what type of content you wanna see next, that would be great. And make sure you share this with your friends. I think you'll learn a lot even if you don't use Vita a lot. This is a really interesting topic and I think it's important for web developers to understand how sites are generated and how to make fast, reliable sites. So let's jump in. To begin, we'll go ahead and install the Vite SSG package as a developer dependency. After it's done installing, we'll open up the main.ts file where we'll import in the Vite SSG from Vite SSG. We'll go ahead and delete a few things in this file because Vite SSG will do everything we need for create app and it'll actually mount for us. So all we need to do is export const create app equals Vite SSG, and then we just have to pass a few things in, app, and also the router. The route file isn't in the correct format, so we're gonna make a few changes to it. We're going to export const router, and we're going to have it be a type route record raw, and we're gonna go and delete the history, we're gonna make it a an array of objects that have all the information on the route inside of it. We'll need to make one change to the type, it's a route record raw, array of, of route records and then we'll need to make a change to our main ts file instead of having a default export we're going to go ahead and make it a named export so we'll just add the curly brackets to it let's go into the package.json we'll add a new script for generate and we'll use the vite ssg build command and this will actually create our ssg app with all the routes as individual files one last thing we need to add to the package.json is a type equals module, and this just tells the Vite that this is an ESM module and it should build correctly when running Vite SSG. And that's basically it. If you want to have a basic Vite SSG app, now you can run npm run generate and it'll create these files. You can see you created an index and an about HTML file. Now we can go into the disk folder that was created and I like to use this tool called HTTP server. It's just a real basic web server that I can run locally. And it has some really nice options to run it as a proxy. And also I can run it for Broadly and gzip, so it takes care of that as well. It will show some information when you start it. And here is the browser. And you can see that this is being statically generated and showing in the network tab of our browser. For more advanced scenarios, we'll go back to the main TS file and we actually have a third argument we can add that gives us the options to change the app, the router, and something called initial state. So let's take a look at this. So this is where we'll set up plugins like Pinya. So we can do const Pinya create Pinya. And then since we have access to app, we can do app.use and pass in Pinya just like we would do normally with any other plugin. This is also where we can set values during build time, and we can use something called initial state. We can check if we are in server-side rendered or build time by checking import.meta.emv.ssr. With this, now we can look at initial state, which basically compromises data that is serialized with your server-side generated HTML, and then is hydrated in the browser when accessed. In this case, we can set the initial state.pinya, to equal what's inside the Pinya store. When we're not building the application, when it's running inside the browser, we can pull the information back out of the initial state and assign it back to the Pinya store. The advantage of this approach is that the statically generated pages will no longer have to refetch this data since it will be available inside the store and set during build time. One last thing you may wanna consider is updating routes. So you have the access to the router object and you can do things like before each route loads, you can make changes using the before each. 
you may need to create some custom routes for your statically generated pages. So you can use a function called included routes. Inside included routes, you can return a promise with all the path routes that you'd like for your app. This can be particularly helpful because you can make calls to backend services to get a list of paths that you can dynamically generate for your application. Included routes function can also be included in your Vite config file, but I find it easier to put it in the main TS file since you also have access to your environmental variables if needed. Now that we understand how to use Vite SSG, let's take a look how we would use it with an Amplify project. This project has already been initialized with Amplify in it, and it already has our libraries installed. If you are interested in how to get started with Amplify, you can check out this video here. Let's open up Amplify console inside our project. This will bring up our Amplify console, and from here we can go ahead and enable Studio and launch it. From here, we can click on data on the left-hand side. This will open up our data modeling, which is our AppSync Manage GraphQL service. We will create a new post model, which will be an individual post that will show up for each statically generated page. For our fields, we'll have an ID, which is automatically added to each new model. We'll also add a title. We'll add content, which will be where we put all the content for each blog post that we're creating. We'll add a slug. A slug will be the name of the path of our blog post that each static page will be generated with. And finally, we'll add a date. Then we'll go ahead and deploy this model and all the backend infrastructure will be created that we can pull down later into our application. With this code, we'll now pull it into our application. We'll copy and paste it and it will pull it down. Now that we have the code pulled down, we can actually use a feature called CodeGen, which will create all our subscriptions, mutations, and queries that we'll need. So it'll ask us a few questions. We're gonna use TypeScript. We're just gonna hit enter through these and this will pull down the information that we need so we can use it with our AWS Amplify library. If we look in Explorer, we have this new GraphQL folder with all our query subscription mutation files that we can import in. I'm gonna jump back into the Amplify console, and this time I'm gonna click on the content in the top left-hand corner. From here, I can create new posts. This is a, a fairly new feature, so I can enter everything I need in for my title, my content, my slug, and date, and I can submit it. And I can also auto-generate data if needed as well. This is really perfect for non-technical people who want to add content to a website. So I'm gonna go ahead and create three different posts inside here, and then we'll take a look at how we can get this into our statically site-generated app. I'm gonna jump back into VS Code, and we're going to our Pinya store, and we're going to create a new state object for our posts. And we wanna use this list post query. This is from the API file that was generated through that CodeGen command. So I'm gonna import that in from the API. And then we're gonna have posts. And since we're using TypeScript, we're going to type it as this list posts query. To make our lives a little easier, we'll also create a getter. And this one will be for post paths. And post pass is going to iterate through and map through every single post that we have and then return back a specific type of path with slash blog in front. And I'll show you how this works in a little bit. I'll name this not counter store. That's kind of the default name out of the box when you add it into a new view app, but we'll call it use blog store. Let's go back into our router file and we'll add in a couple of new paths. First, we wanna create a dynamic path for our blog. So we'll have all the paths start with blog and then our ID will be dynamic. And I'll add one more just for slash blog. And this will just point to a generic page that we'll create here in a moment. I'll go ahead and create a new file for blog.view inside the views folder, and it'll just be an empty file with a template at this point. And I'll change this name from post, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, to just blog. Let's create a new page for the post.view, and we'll add that to the views folder. And we'll just add an empty script at this point. Let's grab the data we need out of our Pinya store. So first we'll import the new blog store we just created. We'll also import our route, and then we'll use our route and our blog store. 
The Pinya store will have a list of all the posts inside of it that we will grab during runtime that I'll show you guys in a little bit. But for now, let's grab them. We'll use store to rest that makes sure that it is reactive. And then we're going to search through the posts to the one that matches the route params ID that we have set up. I'll use a dot find, which will grab the first one. And then for each individual post, we'll do a comparison to see if the slug for the post matches the route params ID. Inside the template, now we will display the content that we just found, making sure we show the title and the content and the date. And I'll just delete the slash here. Just a quick tip here, you might see this if you're inside the blog or the store file, you might see this error here about this import, but you can easily fix this by just adding in type in front here. Let's jump into the home view file. This is the main view that will show up as soon as you load your app. And from here, I just wanna show all of the paths that a user can see. So I'm gonna import in the blog store again, and we use store to refs and I'm going to use the blog store and uh, remember that post paths that I created earlier. So now we're gonna use it to grab all the paths that we have so we can display them on the screen. And once again, we'll use store to refs. Inside the template here, I'm gonna use a V4 for this div here. And this is going to iterate over the path and I'm gonna include an index here. I sometimes do this, so that way I have a, a key. So we'll do in post pass, I'll pass in the index file here. And now we just need to simply use a router link. Now this router link is built into uh, the view router. And then we can just display the path here. And you can see here it says we're missing the two, so we'll add the two. We'll make it dynamic by putting the colon in front. And then we can use a little string interpolation and we'll put in the path. I'll add in an exclamation point because sometimes this can be undefined and this will stop any TypeScript errors that we'll see. I'm gonna jump back into the main TypeScript file and this is where we're going to import in Amplify. As you saw before, you should have this installed as a dependency. And then we're also gonna import in the AWS exports file which was automatically generated when we pulled everything in earlier with that pull command. Also note that this is a Vite app. There's a couple of other small configurations that you need to get Amplify working with a Vite app. It's actually listed in our official documentation under troubleshooting, which I'll link in the documentation below, but we won't go over in this video. Let's add some code in now that will grab data from our GraphQL backend and load it into our Pinya state during build time. Let's add some imports into this file. We'll import our API, our queries that we talked about earlier, some types for a list post query, a GraphQL query, and of course, we'll import our store in. Let's go ahead and import Pinya in and set it up, and we'll do an amplify configure. We'll add in our if statement to check to see if we're running on build time or server side render time, or if we're in the browser. So if we're in the browser, first we want to take our blog store and we want to take the initial state and import it in. This will ensure our initial state.data is loaded into our Pinya store for posts. I'll then add the code that only runs during build time. We'll take the initial state and we'll do a API query to our backend graph sync API and we'll pull the information and set it into the initial state. Inside our included routes, we want to make sure that all our slugs are created as paths in our application for our statically site generated app. To do this, we'll do a API GraphQL query using our queries.list posts that we imported in earlier, and then we'll do a map. So we'll map through every single slug inside there and create this new path with slash blog in front. We'll take those items and we'll use it in our promise.all. So we'll map through all our routes. We'll check to see if any of those route names equals blogs. And if so, we will pass in the array of items. Otherwise, we'll pass in the route.pass. We'll use dot flat here to make sure it's flat. And we'll go ahead and add an extra slash that I forgot here. We can now run npm run generate from the command line. And you could see here that 
all the paths from the three posts that we created are showing on the screen here as rendered pages. Let's go into our disk folder and we'll run our HTTP server command to run the server. So you can see here it is running. We have all our blog posts that we created. We can click into any of them. All this data was fetched uh, during build time. So it's really quick. We're not having to do any fetches to the server. And the bundle size is much smaller in this app because all the configuration that we did was done on the build side. So that's not gonna be bundled in at the end. Hope you guys learned something. Leave a comment below and thanks for watching.